praise God. And praise God. And you can have your seats real quick. You know, I, I'm so, I don't know, I'm just excited. We've been here 13 nights. I'm sorry, tonight will be 13 nights. We've been fasting for 13 days. Every night there's a, a miracle or there's a, a, a light that came into the darkness. God has been showing up, y'all, night after night after night. And I thank God for his, his word that would not return back into him void. And I want to welcome, hallelujah, we have a visitor in the house. Can you stand to your feet, woman of God? Who's that in the house right now? Praise God. We welcome you to this place today. Praise God. Yeah, God bless you. She's like, what? God bless you. Welcome. Welcome. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know about y'all, but this fast has been a different kind of fast for me. You know, it, I'm, I'm an I'm a avid coffee drinker, and I haven't had a cup of coffee, y'all, in 13 days. I would drink three cups of coffee a day. I didn't think I would, could live without coffee. It was coffee and prayer. Amen. Now it's fasting in prayer. Praise God. And I sleep at night and, and I don't I don't get tired. So God has allowed me to understand that I don't need the caffeine. I thought I needed the caffeine. I, all I need is Jesus. All I need is who? Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. I'm not the speaker today, but I wanted someone who's been with us doing the, the prayer and the fasting to give a testimony tonight today. So, Sister Whitfield, I mean, I'm not going to tell your testimony for you. I want to, but can you come and, and can you share with us what God has been doing through you and with you during this 13 days of, of fasting and prayer? I ain't going to tell it. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. On the 17th? On the 17th. That was a Monday. I um, got up and I prayed. And I went to work. But my spirit wasn't right. And before that, I had been asking myself, Sean, what is wrong with you? And I remember last year sometime, Miss Weaver looked at me. And tears was coming out of her face. And she said, I refuse to let the devil have you, Chandra. She said, I refuse to let the devil have you. But on last Monday, when I got to work, I had been praying and seeking, trying to figure out where this thing come from. What, what is this that I'm in? What is this? And it was this lady. I really don't know her. But when she came in alignment with me to leave the hospital, glory to God, I felt something from the top of my neck come all the way down to my waist and it loose as she was walking out the door. And I said, whoa, glory to God. People can be in your midst or you know, around you, and you don't even know that they don't even like you. Hallelujah. Don't even know you. But thank you, Jesus. But when it broke off me, the Holy Ghost said, it's over. It's over. Only thing I can say, I'm back. <laughs> I'm back. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm back. I felt like Rocky when Rocky used to get rid of the box, and he would jump up, couldn't be still. I said, I'm back. I went in the Weaver office. Miss we were doing this right here, like, bring it down, Chandra, bring it down. I know this ain't no ADHD. I'm back. I'm back. I said, uh, when this lady left this hospital, came in alignment with me, I said something broke. And I told her about a dream I had. Glory to God. It was an odd dream. But God was showing me then the trouble was over. And when I went to work, the whole thing just broke. But I thank God for praying when I could, because I got to the place where I couldn't pray. I couldn't read my Bible. Really losing interest in coming to church. But all because God had something linked me up with somebody years ago that knew my spirit. She knew that wasn't me. I kept going to her office telling her something is not right. But I thank God today. I thank God today that I've been released. I've been released. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I be thank God today I'm a release and deliver. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
He said, well, there are two or three in the midst. Huh? He is sitting there. He will be there. Hallelujah. There he is in the midst. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you for not giving up on me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, glory to God. Y'all keep pushing, huh? Y'all keep coming and keep doing what you need to do. Do what's right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The enemy was out to kill me. Not just this time. Hallelujah. Even with my husband people. They was out to kill me. Hallelujah. I didn't tell Miss Weaver, but every day when I went home and went to bed, I felt my life slipping away. I felt myself slipping away. That I didn't tell you. Glory to God. But I thank God for Jesus. I thank God for Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank God for Jesus. So when you don't see people in the house of God, keep them lifted up in prayer. Because you don't know what's going on with them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Especially if you know them in the spirit. Glory to God. He don't take all of y'all. Hallelujah. I learned that a long time ago. Hallelujah. One or two of you. Hallelujah. Check on your brothers and sisters. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Locate them in the spirit. Hey, glory to God. Glory to God. But you got to have a connection with God to be able to go that deep. And I was telling somebody what had happened. And she said, Shonda, you didn't have to go that deep to find out. Go and just give it to God. Oh, no. And I said to myself, let me stop talking to her. Let me stop talking because she's, you don't know like I know. You got to get to the root of the matter. You got to kill the root. Because if you cut the limbs off, it's going to come back. Hallelujah. But I'm delivered. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. On that note, I'm back. Glory to God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Y'all don't know like she know. Y'all don't know like she know. Praise God. And, and can I tell you real quick, Sister Sean and I worked together at the hospital. I'm her boss. I told her the other week, I said, you got this much time before I fire you. Because she don't make my staff crazy. I said, you got this much time before I fire you. And when I was getting ready to fire her, God had to deliver her because I don't have enough. I don't have enough. She came and told me about five times about her looking for another job. I'm finna quit this job. I said, do you not know who you're talking to? I'm your boss. I don't care nothing about that. I said, oh my God, she's gone. She's gone. She was telling me, y'all ain't paying me enough. I'm finna go. I said, Sister Chandra, Pastor, you don't understand. I said, oh, okay. It's like that. But I had to look at her in her eyes, and the Holy Ghost says she's not there. The Holy Ghost says she's not in her right place. And I'm looking at her, and it's just nothing. And I was like, Chandra, where are you? She couldn't answer me. And I began to pray, Sister Latoria, but right here at this altar, I saw God go in and just, oh my God, deliver her. He took that soul back. He put her back in her right mind, right here doing prayer. God delivered her. So if you're in a dark place right now, honestly, if you're in a place that you don't even know if you're coming or going, if you don't know, my God, what's happening with you, I'm going to ask you, give it to God. Because God knows. He does not want you in a place of, of nothingness, a place where you don't know if you're coming or going. That's not how he wants us to live. He said, I'm giving you life and give it to you. What? More abundantly. Amen? Because he is a miracle worker. He is a promise keeper. He is the light in the darkness. Amen? Stand to your feet real quick as we welcome the speaker for the hour, Minister LaQuinton Robinson. Let's give God a, a praise right now for Minister LaQuinton Robinson. That was a wonderful, but can we give God some praise in this place? 
Can we just thank God for being in the place this morning? Can we thank God for waking us up in our right mind? Setting our feet on solid ground. Can we give God a praise today? Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Father. We thank you, Father, this morning. Thank you, Lord. I'm so thankful that God is still giving us miracles, signs, and wonders. In the midst of everything that we deal with every single day. In the midst of just everything we fight to get up for. Right? The, thing, the reason that you snooze your alarm three times before you get that, that thing. Like the thing you're fighting daily. I'm so glad that God makes sure that we can see the miracles, signs, and wonders in spite of. So I thank God for you, Sister Chandra. For your transparency, for your realness. Because what you might not know is somebody's view and perception will be changed because of the honesty of your testimony. Somebody will understand it's okay to be broken and work that close to the pastor. It's okay to not have it all together. Somebody's going to understand that they're not by themselves because of your honesty. So we thank God for the move that he placed in your spirit this morning. We also want to take a moment to thank God for the many blessings that he pours into my life. And one of the most recent of those being fruit of my womb being blessed fruit of my wife being blessed and us welcoming another baby into this world my Naomi Rose Robinson I, I, I honestly question how God works miracle signs and wonders in my life with the type of lifestyle that I lived as a young man to give me all daughters who are like Instagram worthy you know like they could go left real quick like I I, I I wonder what God is doing in my life when that's what he decided to place in my life. I'm like, you didn't want to make them just cute, God. You didn't want to make them just side court, sort of attractive. All of them had to be like model-esque, like every one of them. Well, praise God. Praise God. I ain't have all these gray hairs before I started having kids. But what I feel like God gave me today is something that came from my interaction with one of my beautiful babies recently me and my kids when we clean up if y'all been around my house y'all know i like stuff in order and there's too many hands in my house for things not to stay in order so i will stop everything going on oxygen included to make sure that we stop and get the house in order amen so recently we were getting my house in order we had almost got everything together walls wiped floors mopped things together and my baby girl my two-year-old her name is mariah she's beautiful on the outside however my baby girl watching us clean up and she's watching us go through all of these motions of getting my house in order and what she decides is to take her toy money it's a beautiful little cloth toy money is wonderful because we teach the kids how to count and how to manage their money the same as pastor weaver is teaching here in the ministry we teach them so my son and i are walking into my pantry and we're joking as we watch her grab the money pull up her desk chair and sit at the table he said oh look at the boss about to count her money I looked at my son, I said, that little girl finna make a mess. And we laughed and went on about what we were doing, spent a couple minutes in the pantry, came back out of the pantry, and there is money on the floor, on the ceiling, on the TV entertainment center, stuck in the couch. She blessed everybody, you hear me? She made it rain in the living room. And we come out of the pantry, and my son does nothing but laugh. Amen, Roman? He said, Pop, you were right, she did make a mess. I said, son, I knew what she was going to do with it before I let her have it. I said, son, I already knew she was going to make a mess when I put the blessing in her hand. And my son said, well, then, <laughs> then why? With us cleaning up and getting stuff. Why did you not take Why did you let her have the money? Why did you let her have the blessing if you knew before you gave it to her she was going to make a mess? I said, well, son... I need her to learn how to make messes now while she's with me. So she can understand the value of cleaning up. And I can get down on hands and knees and help her now. So later she'll get it. She'll value cleaning herself. Because when she was young, I let her make a mess. 
because I knew she was right here with me for me to clean it up. Then I sit there, I said, oh, that's the message. Thank you, thank you. I love my babies. I love my babies. What God spoke to me in that moment is say, boy, you just like your kids. Every time you beg, ask, beseech onto the Father, Father, if you would just bless this area of my life. God, I just need you to, like, we, I need you to move over my, and then God is like, I'm going to give it to you, but I just want you to know that I know before I give it to you that you're going to make a mess out of this. I knew it when I put it in your hand that you were going to fumble the ball. But listen, I love you so much and the joy that you're going to have when you unwrap that money, I'm going to let you do it. And what I hope is, what I, what I believe is that when I let you open it, you're going to turn back to me and say, oops, I fumbled. <laughs> I made a mess. And then your father is going to get down on his hands and knees and he's going to help you <laughs> clean up your mess. The problem with a lot of us is we feel like our messes are supposed to be hidden. We throw on rocks and hiding our hand. We feel like there's nothing acceptable about not having it all together. We feel like because I know the father and I am in the father's house, I've been watching how he has been using everyone else to clean up. I've been watching how the father has been cleaning everybody else's life. He stopped everything else they had going on and said, hey, now you got to be focused. Now you got to be driven. Now you got to make sure what you're doing makes sense. And then as for me in my life, it seemed like everything he put in my hands got messy. Everything you trusted me with, like, God, I thought this was a blessing. I asked you for it. You poured it into my life. I thought we were on the same page. God, I thought we were moving now. And then every time I try to move and try to do something with it, I was trying to just count the money, Sister Vicky. And just me counting my money, me checking my account every day, because, you know, you wake up and check your balance before you check your Bible, like, every day. I make sure <laughs> things are where they're supposed to be. And just because I was checking it, stuff got messy. I didn't even know I had that much Apple things coming out of my account. Netflix went up to $20. Like, I had no idea it was going to get this messy. I, I mean, I was checking it. I was, I was alert, Father. I was being a good steward over what you gave me. But what God is saying sometimes... Sometimes, especially when you were babe in the spirit, especially when you're just getting into something, sometimes your mess has a message. Sometimes I need you to fumble the bag. If I didn't, you would think that you actually did something by yourself. God is saying, sometimes I will allow you to fail. While remembering I've never left you, never forsaken you, like, because I love you, I'm sending you to the cross. Because I know what's on the, ah, come on Jesus. Because I know what's on the inside of you, I'm going to let you fall because I know how many times you can get up. Even when you don't, I know this ain't going to take you out. I would never put more on you than you can bear. I'd never, we know what never means. I would never put you in a situation you can't handle. The loss you can handle. The body aches you can handle. The heartaches you can handle. Losing it you can handle. But God says, listen, if you can trust in me, believe in me enough to understand that I am your father. I'm in the house with you even when you make a mess. What I want you to do is come like that little baby and run up to her daddy and be like, Papa, 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 oops. And I believe God is sitting there with open arms saying, I've been waiting on you to bring your high yellow tail. Over here and tell me that you made a mess. I knew you were going to make a mess when I gave it to you. But what we do is we feel like because I'm grown. When I became a man, I put away. all oh, childish. No, 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 no. You still somebody child. It's a difficult concept for my kids to understand how I walk with the authority, power, and command that I do in my house until my mama show up. What daddy says is final, unquestionable, unconversational until grandma walks in. I will give you whatever command I deem necessary. And then when my parent walks in, it's like, well, mom, what do you think? <laughs> and it's such a difficult concept for my kids to understand. And I need them to grasp this concept. 
If y'all knew, if you know, you know. We just gonna leave it there. But I feel like if 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 I can get my kids to sink their teeth into the fact that I can be grown and a father and a business owner and a husband and I can be all of these things and still have to be submitted to somebody I can probably beat up. I mean, if, if it went to the creed, I probably went. She, she'll get now. Y'all know her. She'll get some some low blows, but. I mean, toe to toe, I, I could probably win. And I'm like, just because it looked like I, sh- I could win doesn't mean this is a fight for me to have. I have to teach my kids that it's okay to be in a position where you might look like you have some authority, but understand you're not the final authority. To be in a place where we can look at our life, look at our circumstances, look at whatever situation that we are in and believe in God enough to say, I don't have the final say. Now that's maturity. That's when you say, when I was a child, I thought as a child. Because <laughs> when I was a child, I thought I had it going on. I thought I had it figured out. I thought I knew better than my mama. My mama didn't understand. She, this is a different time. You old. Like, I thought my daddy didn't get where I was coming from. So when I was a child, that's what childish was. When I became a man, I understood. That's why you beat me. That boy just wouldn't shut his mouth. Like, when I became a man, I understood. That's why I couldn't have every shoe in every jersey. We got rent on the first. When I became a man, like maturity came. Understanding came. Why can all of us get all these things of understanding when it comes to bills, but not when it comes to burdens? I'm so mature at the bank, and I'm empty in the spirit. Like, yeah, but I know God. Like, I read the word. I've been going to Sunday school since I, you know, was a baby. And they christened me at the church. I'm like, but you ain't got none of the word in you. You've been around it your whole life. It ain't nothing sunk in. Let me put some scriptures on what we're saying. What God dropped in my spirit is Matthew chapter 23, verses 25 to 28. I'm going to fly through them in the ICB version because it's youth day. How terrible for you teachers of the law and Pharisees, you are hypocrites. Somebody say hypocrites. That's just nice. Don't say it to nobody else. You wash the outside of your cups and dishes, but inside they are full of things that you got by cheating others and pleasing only yourselves. Pharisees, you are blind. First make the inside of the cup clean and good. Then the outside of the cup can be truly clean. How terrible for you teachers of the law and Pharisees. You are hypocrites. You are like tombs that are painted white. Outside, the tombs look fine, but inside, they are full of dead bones and all kinds of unclean things that are there. It is the same with you people. Look at you. You think you are good, but you on the inside are full of hypocrisy and evil. Goodness, that's good Bible. You people that think you've got it together because you've learned how to put your lashes on. You think that you've got it together because you wear your Sunday best and you went to see your barber first. Because you've learned how to clean the outside of the cup. Woe unto you simply because for some reason when you were a kid, you didn't understand the purpose of the mess. I was trying to teach you how to clean it up on the inside. Because if you clean up the inside, the outside will be clean by default. I ain't, I ain't got to put all this together. If I start operating in love, if I start operating in grace and in mercy, if I, if I start giving the things of my heart that God gave on to me, the outside going to look good by default. How many times you saw somebody, like, oh my gosh, they're ugly. Whew, that's a nice suit, but they are unattractive. Then they started preaching or prophesying. You're like, why do they look so good right now? Why? I mean, just because just, the hairline was crooked, but now the crooked works. It's not because they got pretty. It's because something changed on the inside. What you're seeing is what's on the inside. What the Bible is saying in Matthew 25 is that we have gotten so caught up with my cup being pretty to the eye that I don't care how I taste. I don't care about how what you put in me gets tainted. I don't care about everything that you thought you were going to pour into me being messy now because of the mess that I walk around in. And I tell myself, Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I say that I'm, I'm a willing vessel. And I say, Father, pick, pick me up and use me the way that I am. Father, cleanse me head to toe. Father, you. And then I believe that God is looking at us like you wouldn't even drink out of your cup. Like if I presented you to you, would you drink it? Like as a woman, as a mother, would you tell your son to date you? Right? Like the type of woman that you are. And as, a, as a father, would you, would you say that you're telling your daughter you're the kind of man she should look for? If not, then why are you that type of person? Where now in front of my kids, I'm pretty. I'm, I'm put together. Hey, listen, daddy's got it working. But every now and then, me and mom got to go roll up sleeves and talk about some stuff. Because it gets messy. But what we've learned is how important it is to clean up the inside. Because if I take the time, if I do the work, if I do the legwork, listen, to make sure the inside is where it needs to be, everybody can have a drink. Imagine you being at a place where you have a relationship with God and God is pouring into your life and God's blessings are without reproach. He is going to give you what you desire acts for because life and death rest in your tongue. So when you are praising God, worshiping God, and your cup is messy, and you're saying stuff like, Father, fill me up that my cup can overflow. And you start to realize how the mess that was in you was starting to affect the people around you. You ask for it. Because it was in you at one point, the mess, right? And they saw the cute version that you presented. And then you said, God, I want to overflow. I just want so much of you. Help me, Lord. And God was like, I don't want to yet because I know what you're going to do with this thing. I know that if I put this money in your hand right now, you're going to make a mess. I know if I put this relationship in your hand right now, you're going to make a mess. Listen, if I put trust into you right now, you're going to make a mess. If I have you start preaching now, you're going to make a mess. So what God is trying to do is get to the inside of us. That's why they say stuff like God knows the heart of a man. I know what you said. He knows what you meant. I know what you did. He knows why you did it. God knows the heart of a man. So when God is working on the inside of me, he is not working on how beautiful my hairline looks. He is not working on my waistline being snatched. Right? He's working on how I interact with you. He's working on what I'm generous enough to give to you. He's working on the things that I want to keep close in my hand. I wouldn't open my hands up enough to bless you too. He's working on what he can't do through me, and I think he should just do it to me. That's what he's working on. What God wants to do is take each and every one of us and begin to clean us up from the inside. Matthew chapter 25. Amen? Amen. So when we get to a place where we feel like our relationship and our situations, our dynamics get messy, we have to begin to look at the situation like my baby girl did. And be honest and say, I probably can't clean this up by myself. Because if I could clean this up by myself... I probably wouldn't have made this mess in the first place because I would have understood the importance of keeping things together. I would have understood the importance of saying no. I would, un I would have understood the importance of keeping my body whole and why my body is a temple. I would have understood. And if I had understood then and I could do the things that I told myself I should do and the things that I tell myself not to do, I do them not. If I wasn't just like everybody in the Bible then I'd probably be okay without needing the Father's help. But all of us, the Bible says each and every one of us, the best we could ever present is a filthy rag to God. How many of you would like to eat off a dish cleaned with a filthy rag? We have to be honest and open enough. Come on, Sister Chandra. Just say, look, I ain't got it all together. If I had it all together, I wouldn't need God. But the truth is, I'm so human. So human, like I'm related to Eve and them. <laughs> so human. Like I could walk in the garden and still be fumbling the bag. Right? God could be coming to me in the cool of the day and I could still <laughs> drop the bag. It's that serious. So understand first, it's okay. Not as excused, because it's consequences. She got popped on the butt. It's okay though. Because what the father is doing is showing you how to be a good steward. I can't be a good steward over something I've never experienced. 
If I've never held money, I would know what to do with it. Oh, I can have a million dollars? Boom. Gone. Because I've never understood how to value the things that I've never handled. So when you realize that God has put me in situation after situation after situation, like you would have been through four jobs and all your bosses the same? These ain't even the same company. Why do you think all your bosses are the same? I'm sorry. You done moved to three states, had eight boyfriends, all your boyfriends are the same. They ain't even the same race, but you think that they're just the same. But I just, I'm attracting the wrong men. No, boo boo. God trying to teach you how to be a good steward. And you keep deflecting the bag. And now when he presents you with your real, you're like, I don't even, I'm so tired of people. It's love. What I want us to do is get to a place where we can accept the mess and give it to God. Because God says all the time, look, this is not your fight. I don't need you to win. I need you to believe in me enough to get me to fight. Oh, you can't stop smoking? Small thing. Give me the fight. You can't stop lying? Small thing. Give me the fight. You keep making a mess over stuff that wasn't even messy to begin with. Give, give me the fight. You, you saw structure. You saw other people have it together. You're looking around at the people in your dynamic. You're like, how can you be getting black? How are you getting married? And how can you be, be financially responsible now? Like how We grew up in the same city. You stole with me. We lied and laid together. How could you? And something had to happen on the inside of them. So what you're looking for is what happened on the outside to put them in a position now to be successful. And what God is doing has nothing to do with how you look. I believe that we've become so comfortable in messes. Because as another one of my children, while my oldest son and I were in the pantry getting things together, and my baby girl, my two-year-old, was making it rain in the living room, there was another one of my sons, my six-year-old, who was also in the living room, totally oblivious to the mess. Didn't even see it. Like... I walked in, hey, what, you ain't see this? You see what? What do you mean, Pop? Oh. And I believe a lot of us are that same way. Well, I've been in this mess for so long, I don't even see it. I don't even notice it got messy. Like, I just, we've been talking for two years. Like, what do you mean it's over? Like, <laughs> I've been working here for years. Why am I not... Come on, fired. Come on, pastor. <laughs> we want to be promoted. Like, you should have been fired by now. But the grace of God. But what I'm saying is, we get so comfortable being in our mess that we get blind to it. And somebody tries to come and tell us, hey, you know that your life dirty, right? Don't talk about me, boo-boo, because you ain't had your life all together. Your cup ain't clean. Don't be coming over here telling me about the speckle in my eye when you got a whole... No. No, and the crazy thing is God is sending somebody to tell you about the mess in your life because they shouldn't be able to see inside you. But realize for some reason they can see what you're dealing with. For some reason they can see past your pretty cup and they tell you, hey, I love you so much. Listen, this might be an area that you might want to give to God. That's it. That's it because a lot of us also feel like as the people who can realize that your life is messy that we need to tell you how to clean it up. I ain't God. This might be an area that you might want to give to God. When it's, what, 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 you, what you trying to say? I'm saying I love you enough to tell you the truth. That's what I'm saying. It's a mess. Cool. Let me know if you need something. Like, oh, wait, wait. So what do you think I should do? I literally said, you should give it to God. Then after you give it to God, you can come to me. We can work this thing out. Don't come to me first. Go to him first. Seek him first, because uh, you come to me first, we're going to fumble it together, and I ain't got time. But what I want you guys to understand is, yes, there's different versions, different elements, different places that each and every one of us exists. But understand, we all, for some, in some kind of capacity, deal with a mess. All of us. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> there was only one without spot and wrinkle. There was one. And he was like literally the son. Literally. And I know that we are all adopted into the kingdom of God, which means we can all operate that same way. But we have to do first is begin to give our message to God. We have to begin to look at our situation, circumstance, dynamics, interactions, ex expressions, emotions, attitudes, way I spend my money, way I do what I do, the car that I drive, the way that I dress, and give them to God. 
I know a lot of us think that all that stuff isn't really necessary. I think, like, I come to church, I pay my tithes, I spoke twice this year. So because of that, I'm so holy. Whew. Boy, I'm so righteous. You don't even understand. If you compare this to where I was last year, that's great. Great. Don't get it twisted. Happy New Year. Great. But I believe that God is requiring more of us. I believe that we get so comfortable with what we consider enough. And I believe that God is saying, like, if you had any idea what I put in you, like, if, you, if I could open your cup and show it to you, what everybody else sees, like, why do you think people just glean to you? Like, why do you think everybody keep asking of you and requiring of you and pulling on you? I don't pull on people who ain't got purpose. Like, I'm not going to come pull on you if I don't think you can pour into me. For what? So even though we ourselves a lot of times look at ourselves and say, I ain't really, listen, I need to go to the gym. I knew I shouldn't have had that chocolate. Like, we look at ourselves and we get so critical that we say, I can't really, like, because Jesus, I know, and God, I know. <laughs> But who am I? Like, and I believe that the Father is saying that I love you enough to make sure your name is known. Like having your name written in the Lamb's book of life. Like having your name written next to Jesus' name means something. And because that means something, that means that you, your life, your actions, your thoughts, your decisions mean something. It has purpose, even when we don't see it. How many times has somebody come to you and said, hey, last year, when you gave me just that little $5 help, you have no idea how you blessed me. How many times has somebody said, hey, I was feeling so bad, and you told me my hair was cute, and you have no idea how that lifted my spirit. Hey, hey, how many times has somebody come to you and said something to you that you thought was insignificant, and you realize the life you spoke into them brought them back to life? Now take that. Rewind it. And now analyze how many times you didn't speak life. How many times you spoke death. How many times you spoke down. How many times you spoke criticism. The criticism that I have for you is, hey, this might be an area that you might want to take to God. And if we need to get into it, then let's get into it. But that's all I got. And then if it grows from there, praise God. Because my life's messy too. Everything ain't perfect. Everything ain't together. And I say this because I want all of us to understand that all of us have a purpose that surpasses our pain. We all have a purpose that surpasses where I'm placed. Like we all have something God wants to do, not just for us, but from us. For other people, for everybody in my life. Everybody in my life has a reason. I don't even understand why God connected me and Billy, but now Billy been at church every Sunday. I'm like, oh, okay. Right? Like, I had no idea. Like, I just, me and Billy, go, Billy, you hungry? Let's go. What you, all right. Whatever. See you later. We didn't change numbers or nothing. Then I then he started popping up at church. Hey, what's up, preacher? I was like, what's up, man? And to me, it was insignificant. Changed that man's whole outlook of ministry. He didn't trust preachers. I didn't know he ain't trust preachers. I would have been offended. I'm a preacher. What you trying to say? But I love you, my brother. I love each and every one of us to a place where I hope that we can understand what God is doing on the inside of us. To understand that even when something is a blessing, if I'm blessed out of time, I'm blessed out of point, I'm blessed out of placement, I, that blessing might become a mess. But what I want us to understand is even when it gets messy, God is with us. Even when my situation doesn't go the way that I think it should go, even when I don't get the outcome that I feel like I should get, even when my kids don't act the way I think they should act. Ain't none of y'all see this mess? Even when I feel like I'm by myself in this thing. God is saying, look, you're never alone. Like, I'm not just beside you. I'm within you. Like, I'm not just, right? Like, I'm not just walking along. Like, I'm, I want to I wanna live on the inside of you. You say you're my vessel. Let's get it done. Like, God is at a place where he wants us so much. That he wants your mess too. He wants your brokenness. And a lot of times when we read the Bible, it says stuff like when you're weak, that's when my strength is shown. Right? Like when you're broken, that's when my light shines the brightest through you. Like when you're empty, that's when I can fill you up. And I think when we clean out cups, cups have to get empty to be cleaned out. And when we learn the importance of cleaning our cups from the inside, cleaning ourselves 
from the inside, believing God exists on the inside, the outside will change by default. So if you've been looking for something to change in your life, in your hands, in your relationships, in your finances, in your state of mind, attitude, whatever it is where you've been saying, I can see how life could be better if this was a little better. God is saying, I'm happy to breathe on that thing. Let me in. I've been knocking for years. You've been listening to sermons on YouTube. You've been going to churches. You've been in Sunday schools. You pray before you eat and stuff, and I bless it. But listen, I need you to get to a place of openness where you can be honest with you. Because once you can be honest with you, it's easy to be honest with everybody else. But I need you to get to a place where you're honest with you. Because when you can be honest with you, you have no reason to hide it from me. And then when you bring me the mess, the Father says, I'm on my hands and knees with you. I want every stripe that you thought you were going to take to hit my back. Every burden you thought you were going to carry to be in my arms. But we have to get to a place where we understand God enough to say, listen, I need you on the inside of me in a way that I can't even understand. In a way that I can't even wrap my mind around. Like, I don't, you are so big and so massive and you want to condense yourself to the inside of me. I don't get it. But I love you, and I trust you, and I need you to help me get these messes together. And that's when stuff begins to change. That's when you start looking at life and you start shouting like Chandra. You start saying, glory, hallelujah, for no reason. <laughs> you something. And people, um, Chandra done lost her whole mind again. But what I believe is that the Holy Spirit wants each and every one of us to get to a place where our openness looks like that. Where our openness looks like something where it doesn't really matter how you view me after. It don't matter if you accept it. It don't matter if you like it. It don't matter if you think I'm cute. What matters is God moving on the inside of me. Somebody give God some praise. Let's stand. Let's stand. Let's stand. Amen. Amen. Listen, if you take nothing else away because that boy talked too much, <laughs> what I want you to understand is that we all make messes. Even the person that you look up to makes messes. The difference in their life not being messy is them giving their mess to God first. That's the difference. So each of us falls short. Each of us fumbled the bag each of us don't have everything together it's impossible but the difference between somebody who makes a mess and somebody who lives a messy life is those of us that give it to God those of us that believe that he's still the same God now that like when I got stuck between a rock and the hard place he said put the stick in the water and the water parted like same God the same God where they say, hey, this, I want to kill the whole next generation of little boys, put you in a basket, and you floated in an alligator river to somebody else to take you out the river. Like, it's the same God. And we, I had a conversation with my kids this week in our Bible study that the, the stories got extreme. You know, we talking about Job, and we talking about that, the garden, and we talking about Abraham. I was like, this stuff sounds like some soap opera type stuff, and it's fun to talk about and go into the stories. But can I, can I just tell you for a second, like, this is real. That this is real people <laughs> in real life and they watch real fire and brimstone fall down. Like, we joked about Lot's wife turning back around but like, like it was cute. Like, oh no, run to the next city. We're going to destroy your city. And don't look back. You realize why they running like bombs going off? They see sulfur on fire flying over their head to destroy. I probably would have looked back too. People screaming like, I'm sorry. Um, are we going to make it? Let me just look and see how close it is. Right? They're people. These aren't just stories. This isn't just a book. This isn't some nonfiction thing that we picked up. But this is a lesson book for us not to be them. For us to learn from their mistakes. Some of us are still going to touch the stove. But some of us understand that somebody else touched it already. I can see the evidence all over your life. I'm going to leave that stove alone. But what I believe is each of us want to be at a place where we feel like, God, listen, I can see areas that might be just a little messy. My mouth get a little messy sometimes. 
right? Even if it don't come out my mouth, my mind get a little messy <laughs> sometimes. Like, I, I need you just to take some of this mess and let me just give it to you. Because if I keep it, my life going to get messy. Things going to get messy. If that's you, you can raise your hands all over the building. If there's an area in your life where you can say, God, it might just have a little mess. Even if I think it might be easy to clean up, I'd rather give it to you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we stand in your presence today knowing that you are God, exalting you as the Father, as our King, as our Lord, and as our Savior. Father, we believe that where two or more are gathered, you are in the midst. And Father, when you are here, all darkness has to flee. It has no place, it has no possession, and it has no placement here with the people of God. And I believe that your people, called by your name, have areas in their heart where they're saying, God, I need you to take this mess from me. God, I need you to help me clean up this mess. I believe that there's even mistakes that the people have made and they feel like now I just have to deal with the consequences. But Father, you promised that everything we were going to deal with, you placed on the cross. You promised that your son took every lash, every whooping, every beating. You promised that if I believed in Jesus Christ, that I shall be saved even from myself. So God, today I speak a covering over the people of God that allows the messes that we've been dealing with to be laid at your feet. Move on their hearts, Father, to show them it's okay to have some areas in your life, to have some things that you are doing, to have some things that you've pursued that haven't gone the way that you feel that they should have gone. But because of God and his grace and his mercy, we can be made whole again. We can have a reset putting our feet back on solid ground father i believe that you are the placement and pinnacle of pivot in our hearts and our lives and on our spirits i believe that things are going to be changed at this moment because somebody understands the message in their mess somebody understands that everybody gets messy somebody understands father god that it's something you're trying to stir up on the inside of them with these messes let them be at a place of peace that surpasses their understanding. Let them be at a place of faith where they can continue to walk even when they feel blind. We ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Let's give God some praise. Come on, Pastor. Bless God. Praise God, I got it. Glory to God. Praise God. I'm going to have you just remain standing. This message was definitely um, timing. Timing. I believe that there might be some here who really need to recommit themselves to the Lord. Who really need to just say, you know what, God, I'm here. And I'm, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I, I really want to give my life to you for real. Amen. And if you're here and you just want to recommit, I'm going to ask that you would come up and we're just going to touch and agree with you.